We've got Ellie Dog with us today. She just got back from doggy daycare today, so she is so happy to be home. And we have Mr. Doug here who's gonna be helping us out. All right, so we are continuing this month. Actually, we've been talking about it all summer long, talking about faith. And faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. And we are going to be continuing to talk about Paul this week, the Apostle Paul. All right, so I figured it would be a little fun to maybe have some review questions for Mr. Doug to see how good his memory is. All right, Mr. Doug, question number one. The Apostle Paul used to be called what? A, Saul, B, Peter, or C, Gustan? What do you think, kids? Mr. Doug, what's the correct answer? I think A, Saul. Yes, very good. He used to be called Saul. Very good. All right, question number two. Saul was on the road to what city when he encountered Jesus? Was it A, Orlando, B, Fort Wayne, or C, Damascus? Kids, what do you think it is? Go ahead, Mr. Doug. What is your answer? I would say C, Damascus. Very good. Yes, he was on the road to Damascus. All right, last question. Hey, Mr. Doug, you are on your game today. All right, when Saul had the encounter with Jesus, he became what for three days? A, a millionaire. B, blind, that meant he couldn't see. Or C, a dancing frog. What's your answer, kids? All right, Mr. Doug, what do you think it is? I would say B, blind. Blind, yes, very good, awesome. Good job, Mr. Doug. You should give him a hand. Yay. So diving into our lesson today, Paul was always on the move. Wherever Paul went, he boldly preached the good news of Jesus. So he would go, over here to tell people about Jesus. Then, after some time passed, he would maybe make his way over here to share the good news with the people in this town. Finally, he would make his way back over here to tell the people the good news about Jesus. All right, so many Jewish and Greek people listened to Paul and decided to believe in Jesus. But pretty much wherever Paul went, there would be a bunch of group. They would there would be a group of religious leaders who would try to stop him. Paul and his companions were forced to leave a place called Thessalonica because of a group of religious leaders there. The leaders even followed Paul to a town called Berea. They ran him out of that town too. The Jesus followers in Berea helped Paul to escape to the coast where he could hop on a boat and travel to Athens. Before he left, Paul left instructions for his friends Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. When Paul got to Athens, he discovered that the people who lived there believed in a lot of false gods. When Paul was walking the streets of Athens, he saw lots of statues of these false gods. The people in Athens believed these gods were in charge of different things, maybe health or strength or weather. Paul was pretty upset when he took a look at those statues. He wanted the people to know about the one true God. Paul went 
to visit the Jewish synagogue so he could tell the Jews and Greeks there about Jesus. He also took some time to speak with people in the marketplace. Paul was a busy guy. Well, Paul's words about Jesus stirred up some people just like they had in the past. There was a really smart group of thinkers in Athens. They were interested in what Paul was saying, but they wanted to ask some questions. So they brought Paul to a meeting to the Areopagus which was the high court of Athens. These thinkers had an important question for Paul. You ready for their important question, Paul? Yes. This is from Acts 17, 19 and 20. What is this new teaching you're giving us? You have some strange ideas we've never heard of before. We would like to know what they mean. It was pretty cool that these thinkers wanted to know more about Paul's message. They wanted to understand. They had lots of gods, but Paul was talking about the God, about a God they hadn't heard about before. Paul wanted to connect the story of Jesus with something they already knew. And here's what Paul said to them next. He remembered seeing an altar with these words, to an unknown God. And this is from Acts 17, 22 to 25. People of Athens, I see that you are very religious in every way. As I walked around, I looked carefully at the things you worship. I even found an altar with an unknown God written on it. So, you don't know what you're worshiping? Now I'm going to tell you about this unknown God. He is the God who made the world. He also made everything in it. He is the Lord of heaven and earth. He doesn't live in temples built by human hands. He is not served by human hands. He doesn't need anything. Instead, he himself gives life and breath to all people. He also gives them everything else that they have. Paul knew that the people might listen to the words of their own writers who had actually written things that are true about God. Even though these writers didn't know God yet, some of their writers had written, we are his children. And that's from Acts 17, 28. And Paul told them that, that, was true. We are his children. God is alive and real, not some statue. Paul explained that God had called everyone everywhere to follow him and that God had proved this by raising Jesus from the dead. How do you think the people responded when Paul said all of this stuff about Jesus? Well, some of them made fun of Paul's message. How rude. But others said they wanted to hear Paul speak more about Jesus. Paul was able to talk about Jesus in a way that connected with the people in Athens. He used their own altars and writers to help them understand who Jesus is. And eventually some people in Athens decided to believe in Jesus themselves like a man named Dionysus and a woman named Damaris. Paul continued to share the good news and love of Jesus with all the people in, of Athens because he knew this. And this is our bottom line for the week. You can help others know Jesus. That's exactly what Paul did in our story today, right? He was traveling around preaching, traveling around preaching, traveling around preaching. He was telling others about Jesus. And you know what? God wants us to do the same thing too. And we can do that in so many ways. We can share God's love with people that we know, maybe who are having a bad day, or maybe if somebody new moves to your neighborhood, maybe you could show them God's love just 
by saying hi and how are you? You can show God's love by telling the truth, right? right. It's always a good idea to tell the truth. Um, what are some other ways you can show God's love to others? By helping others. Yeah, by helping others in need. That's right. Very good. All right. So, guys, this week, share the good news about Jesus with somebody. Tell others, right? Tell them the good news about Jesus. Tell. All right. You guys have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Bye.